My guest on this week's episode of Susan Search is Curtis Boyd, founder of The Transparency Company. Anyone who has paid any attention to local SEO knows that spam is a big problem. In many cases, the spam isn't merely annoying, it's downright fraud. Consumers are harmed. The Transparency Company exists to solve some of those problems. Curtis and his team have figured out a way to detect fake reviews. They've created a tool that will produce a transparency report that identifies reviews that were not naturally generated. How does the tool work? How can businesses use the tool to identify unscrupulous competitors? What's Google's role in all this? I'm going to ask Curtis these questions and many more. Grab something cold to drink and join me for a conversation with Curtis Boyd. We'll chat about the challenge of detecting spam from anonymous users. I'll ask him about his collaboration with our mutual friend and veteran spam fighter, Jason Brown. Make sure to listen to the fascinating backstory of how Curtis ended up owning a spam detection company. Curtis Boyd, welcome to Southern Search. How you doing? Hey, good. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You were excited to have you. So the transparency company, the company that you're the founder of, figured out how to detect fake reviews. This is very interesting to me. How did you figure it out? Was there some eureka moment where you were like, oh, this will work, and you figured something out? Or how did you come about uh, detecting these things in the first place? Oh, man. Well, my my story starts a few years back, about nine years ago. Um, I was a student nurse in a hospital. I was finishing my last year of nursing school. I was precepting in the ER. And I ran into a doctor who started complaining about a fake review that was hurting his private practice. And he put me into a bad mood. And so I started complaining about my student loans. And the doctor, you know, just kind of like gave me the rolled his eyes at me. It was like, well, you know, if you can figure out how to pay out, how to remove this fake review, I'll pay off your student loans. I was like, but doctor, this is 32 grand. And he's like, I've probably lost 150 grand just this week from this fake review. You know, I charged 10 to 15 grand a surgery. I've lost 10 consultations that I know of. So I'd be happy to pay off your student loans, Curtis. My mom worked at the hospital. She knew who, she knew who that doctor was, and so she's a Curtis. I, I he's he's a, he's a, he's good. He's probably good for it. He, I, we all know who he is. So I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Uh, Forty eight hours later, got nowhere. I couldn't remove the review. I I tried everything: calling my dad's lawyer, golfing buddy, emailing, making ridiculous threats, you know, to remove the review. Nothing. Um, I had 800 bucks in my bank account at the time. I ended up flying to San Francisco and staking out employees who worked at the company where the review was written. And I approached people as they walked in the building. I said, excuse me, do you work here? Do you work here? I, there's a doctor in, in LA with a fake review. I need your help to remove this review. And they're like, are you crazy? Are you homeless? Are you hungry? What's going on? I'm like, no, no. I, I'm just a nursing student trying to figure out how to get this review, this fake review removed for this doctor. And I could tell some people could help me. Like they knew what to do. They were just like, no, get, get out of here. Get out. Don't, don't bother me. Uh, so I stayed a day. I was young, unmarried at the time, having fun in San Francisco, checked into a hostel, stayed another day. On the third day, a young girl finally was like, yes, I know how to help you. She sat down with me, showed me what to do. Uh, and 48 hours later, I had a check for $32,000. And okay. Yeah, that doctor happened to be on the director of the entire physician network. He was the on the board of directors for the for the entire hospital. Um, and uh, before I graduated from nursing school, I was managing the reputation of over eight hundred doctors. Uh, he he hooked it up, showed me how to you know uh, st you know start a business, register, file CPA taxes, all that stuff. Ended up going back to school to learn how to code so that I could automate the dispute processes with a lot of these big websites and, 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 you know, train a computer to look at reviews the same way I did. Right. So that right. I didn't have to read all these reviews anymore, you know, reading the reviews for 800 doctors became, it you know, burning out sure. real quick. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I started to scale that software company. It was called objection co at the time. And, um, you know, doctors turned into lawyers, contractors. We started bringing in all sorts of other types of industries. And oh. and we'd get a lot of calls. They'd be like, hey, yeah, we got a negative review we want you to remove. And I'd say, okay, is it fake? And they'd be like, no, but we want you to remove it. And I'd be like, that that's not what we do. Like, if it's fake, I can help you remove it. But if it's real, we don't silence consumers. Like, they're like, oh, okay, well, here's a blank check. Why don't you just write me 100 reviews and, and we're good? And I'd be like, Whoa, 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 whoa! You 
you've got the wrong guy. Like, I, that's, that's not what I do. That's not what I do. And that conversation happened more times than I care to admit, um, hundreds of times, uh, with doctors and lawyers and people who all of a sudden changed my perspective of online reputation today and the reviews that were out there. And I started investigating and I started looking at these reviews and I'm like, wait a second, these reviews are fake. And I know why, I, I know why they're fake. So went back to school again for machine learning and data science, ended up building algorithms to detect these fake reviews. And I'd love to share a bunch of these little algorithms that we built, but yeah, now we do this for uh, the attorney general's office and a few other regulators, a few other yeah. international organizations and, and uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good at it. What a fascinating backstory. I'm glad I asked. Um, well, there's a, there's a, there's a logical question. I think that's, that's hanging in the air here, which is like, if you can figure it out and I'm assuming that you don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of engineers helping you out with this stuff. No. Do you have any insight into why the fourth largest company in the whole world uh, can't figure this out more easily? Do you have any, any sense of why Google struggles to take down these spammy reviews more quickly? Oh, I've got, I've got my own ideas and they're just my opinions, but they have to do with fiduciary responsibility to shareholders, right? I mean, like who is Google's customer? They're not consumers. They're not regular day-to-day -day people. They're businesses who spend tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in advertising. So who's posting these fake reviews? It's their customers. It's the people who are spending money with them. Fake reviews make advertising more profitable. And it's my opinion that they are financially motivated not to do anything because it hurts that they've got fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. So, yeah, I mean, it's like you want us to moderate the platform that is printing us money. Why do you want us to do that? We don't want to do that. It, yeah. So, yeah. It's Fox part of the hen house. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. So here, here's a question for you. So Google allows you to leave anonymous reviews. Yeah. So this seems like it could make for a challenge in detecting fraud you know, like, how do you make heads or tails of reviews that are left anonymously? How can you tell if that's that's fake or not? That's a great question. So we built our own database, um, and we, when we come across these contributors, we can start to save their reviewer behavior, right? On the anonymous profile, it says, hey, this reviewer has chosen not to display their reviews, right? So you can't see the other businesses that they wrote, wrote wrote reviews for. But when I'm scanning a business, I can see that reviewer on the business reviews page and I can see their contributor URL. So what we do is we save that contributor URL, which is static. We each have a, a static unchanged contributor URL and we say, hey, that person wrote a, a, a review for this business. And in our backend, in our database, if we see them again, we just add another business to that contributor URL's profile. So we are mapping it out on our own uh, and are able to map all of this out despite them having turned on the anonymous feature. And we can connect to see what other businesses uh, they've written reviews for. We look for you know lots of fun things like category diversity. Are they, is there a healthy amount of different business types? Sh uh, a shoe store, a coffee shop, uh, a dentist, maybe, uh, you know, maybe they went and stayed in Hawaii. That's good. Like we like to, we like to see vacation reviews. Uh, but what's bad is when I see, you know, they're writing, you know, reviews for nine different locksmiths throughout the country. <laughs> right. Yeah, normal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, very, very interesting. So we're kind of, Going through this, and I, I, it feels like I should take a beat here. So anyone in local SEO knows how big of a problem, you know, spam in, lo in, in Google My Business or Google Be Business Profile is. Uh, but there are people who are watching this who probably don't work in local SEO. They don't follow this moment to moment. You know, can you help to summarize? You seem like you would be able to do this. Can you help to summarize the enormity of the problem? Do you have any kind of like ballpark of how many reviews are spamming? Totally. Like that? Totally. 
So in 2019, Google disclosed that they removed 55 million reviews from the platform. In 2020, oh, they disclosed they removed 75 million reviews from the platform. And in 2021, they disclosed that they removed 95 million reviews from the platform. It's an average of 280,000 reviews per day uh, being removed. And in my opinion, it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? It's that, oh, uh, fine, it's obvious. Maybe we'll do something about it today, right? It, it's it, it's mm. overwhelming. It's an overwhelming number. If you think about the cost businesses are, are, are spending, you know, $5, 10 $50 per fake review, and we know that they're removing 280,000 fake reviews a day. You think, you think about the billions of dollars that are be, being spent on fake reviews. It's a billion dollar industry, fake reviews are. It's, it's a massive industry that employs tens of thousands of people overseas in giant warehouses where they sit at their computers and they create fake profiles all day long and they come up with fictitious content, now sometimes using GTP3 which is pretty interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I think the other thing, maybe somebody else, another thing that people who are listening to this might not realize is that fake reviews aren't just annoying. You know, the, the example, or, or even costly, right? Like the uh, example of the doctor, some, some, some money failed to flow to his pockets. That, that, that's very annoying. Um, but there are instances where fake reviews are like the linchpin for a criminal perpetrating a fraud, you know, like this, this gets to serious life and death, you know, lose your life savings territory pretty quickly, doesn't it? Absolutely. There are certain professionals where if you hire them, they can ruin your life. I mean, really ruin your life. Uh, doctors, lawyers, contractors, that's really where we specialize and we try and do make the be best predictions as possible, whether those reviews are real or fake. Um, but if you hire the wrong doctor, you can die. Um, if you hire, for example, there was a obstetrician who decided to change careers and go into cosmetic surgery and started do, out of nowhere offering breast augmentations. They were, they were, uh, many of those patients were botched and will have lifelong scars and oh, revisions over and over and over. And th those five-star reviews that people read that led to choose this doctor, they took them at face value. They just trusted that they were real. They thought, oh, big techs, big techs got me. They would, they would remove fake reviews for doctors. They, not at all, not at all. So yeah, um, moving companies. I mean, there's so many stories about people that will come pick up your stuff, park it and say, hey, you want your stuff? Why don't you give us two grand and we'll think about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Just extortion artists. And those those fake reviews make it easier to hire people like that. There's so many lead gen companies out there that create these fake listings, populate with fake reviews. And as a consumer, you say, oh, great. Yes, uh, I'd like this service. and uh, I'll give you my name and f email, no problem. And now they're selling that lead to a random company who doesn't i can promise you doesn't have a five-star profile right mm -hmm. and you they they have no idea who who they're about to work with that they're that bit, companies who need to use lead gen companies usually have pretty terrible reputations right they, yeah. they have bad reviews so yeah it's 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 pretty bad out there well my my our mutual friend jason brown was on the southern search and he was talking about how a story about drug rehabilitation places. And so you, these are the sorts of businesses that, that get into it. These are life and death matters at, at, at times. So it's not just an annoying thing. It's a, these are they're really malicious intent in some of these, uh, in, in some of these fake reviews. So I, 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 I wonder about Jason. So he's one of the most well-known spam fighters on the planet. Yep. Uh, you guys are teaming up. That's a big addition for you guys. It was huge for I, us. I, I love Jason. I like. I think he's like got this righteous indignation going. Um, tell us what it's like working with Jason. What he's what he's brought to the table. Oh, he's such a passionate guy. Um, you know, uh, he came. He flew with me to the last attorney general meeting where we did some training with the staff, and you know, we helped you know help them understand the you know these our reports and why these businesses have fake reviews so that they can do their thing, you know, sending notices and, and what have you to these businesses. Um, and 
the 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 passion and the fire he has about this the consistency and, and going after the these businesses a lot of people they will look at a company get upset and then they'll try once right they'll they'll try reaching out to an administrator just once and they'll give up after that jason is tenacious so he's kind of like a bloodhound if you just feed him <laughs> the scent of blood he's going to go after it uh, in, in, a, in a way I've never seen before. He's gotten more ro more results for our clients than I've ever seen uh, previous to having worked with someone like Jason. So yeah, it's been, it's been a dream come true. I mean, I've never met anyone else who really cares about review fraud um, as much as Jason does. I, I, I echo that, that sentiment. So, all right. So you've mentioned them a couple of times, the attorney general, there's the FTC gets involved in this stuff. I believe yep. you guys work with them as well. I've never had a relationship like that with a government entity. How does that relationship work? What, how do you guys work in partnership? You know, it was, I've never done government contracting before um, any of this. So I didn't know how procurement worked or how government, uh, you know, budgeting worked. But having gone all th through it officially, right, and getting, you know, these award letters, signed contracts, RFPs, RFQs, and really going through their their process, um, it's neat. It's pretty cool. Um, but uh, it makes it so so much more official. Um, and, and, it, and it really, it, it's really empowering to know that our data is used by regulators to sue businesses with fake reviews. If you think of, you know, the these traffic cameras that are recording cars as they go through red lights and are are violating you know local traffic law and they're sending it to the government the regulators to issue a citation and ticket that's kind of what we're doing in the sense that we are recording businesses who are cheating and violating advertising laws sending it to regulators and now those regulators for the first time can give them notices and start to sue them just a few months ago, uh, businesses and with one of the AGs we worked with, or at work can still work with, uh, sued a business for fake reviews, and in a, about nine or ten weeks, they settled for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They saw the evidence we had prepared, and they were just like, "How we want to get out of this? How much? How much do we have to pay?" And yeah, they, it was it was very abrupt after the lawsuit was filed. Oh, that's interesting. I have a question. So this is this is something I thought about before the interview. So what if a business owner runs a scam and finds that their business has a lot of fake reviews? Mm -hmm. You know, they, it's the first time they realized it, right? There are some benign reasons why that could happen um, or some understandable reasons, maybe like the business owner is just kind of running the business and he hired some nefarious agency because they thought they looked good or something like that. In any event, they run the scan and the results are bad. Mm hmm. What can they do? What, what, what's going to be done? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, after we scan a business, we publish a listing that gets indexed on Google and is find discoverable, right? So you're going to have a, a, a transparency listing that says all sorts of bad things about your business and your reviews. So it's important that you definitely reach out to us. You want to get the full picture. You want to understand all the data, the why these reviews are fake. Um, right. and, and just like you said, businesses hire nefarious actors. Uh, maybe it was the marketing director you, they fired three years ago because he was a bad right. egg and he purchased the fake reviews. Maybe it was that overseas SEO company that you hired, um, that is trying to get you to get, get you to generate revenue real quick. So you don't fire them. Um, because you know, they, they're always trying to, every business is, you know, trying to, keep their clients. Um, sometimes, most of the time, from what I'm, I've, you know, seen, the business owners are aware of it. Um, they'll never admit to it, which I understand, right? You don't, they never want to admit any liability. But at the end of the day, what business owners need to understand is that they are, it's their business. It doesn't really matter who purchased the reviews at the end of the day, because it's really hard to prove who purchased the reviews. All that matters is that right now your listing has fake reviews that are actively deceiving consumers, which is against the law. And because it's your business, you're liable. Google's not liable. Yelp's not liable. The business owner's liable. The attorney general's not going to sue 
those big tech companies, they're protected by Section 230. The, the small business owner is responsible and the small business owner will get sued. So at the end of the day, they are, they are uh, the ones that are, you know, <laughs> held liable and, and need, to, right. need to be compliant. They need to understand what's going on with their reviews. Well, I, I like it. Is, is, there a, is there a different process for, let's say, I'm, I'm consistently looking up at a competitor of mine. So I'm, I'm a dry cleaners and I can see the dry cleaner ahead of mine is, is constantly ranking ahead of me and they've got all sorts of fake reviews. I run the scan and I can notice now that like my competitor is cheating. They've got a bunch of, uh, got a bunch of fake reviews and I want to take them down. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to have justice here. Is there a, is there a different approach that you would suggest than if you had on your, is the same thing you, you go to you guys um, and let you work your magic. Is that how it works? Yeah. And you know, I just realized I didn't fully answer your last question about what people can do, you know, when they have fake reviews, but it, Jason can remove fake reviews off of most platforms. Right. He's really talented at it. So once we, I, I, once we identify your a business's fake positive reviews, we go through what's called review rehabilitation. Uh, we kind of lock up your data so that temporarily no one else can access it while we're, scrubbing your profile and then and then we get those re- fake positive reviews off and that way we can give you a clean bill of health get you a blue report something you can be proud of and monitor you for at least a year so that we make sure you're not uh, up to any more bad behavior now the same with the uh, competitors we have a brand new dashboard it's about four weeks old um, it automatically pulls in uh the way you define yourself on Google My Business or your Google Business Profile. So it takes the the category and it pulls it into the dashboard and it's and it queries uh, your 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 competitors with reviews within a 40 40 mile radius. Now you can Mm -hmm. add competitors ad hoc or remove them, uh, but it it automatically will scan them all to see you to see which businesses have fake positive reviews and then you can download the report right inside of the dashboard and if you so choose you can have jason you can feed, just feed that blood scent to him and send him after him um just as an example there was a uh, a recruiting company a headhunter company out of south carolina they had about 800 almost 780 reviews uh, a month and a half after Jason got to them, they're down to 110 reviews. Um, wow. Can you imagine that? Devastating. Like, go from 800 reviews to 100 just like that. It's it's bad. Wow. Yeah. I, these stories are crazy to me. So you, you, you started talking about the tool a little bit. I, I want to unpack that more if I could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, that was I did not realize that. So if I want to know about the ecosystem that I'm existing in. So if I'm, again, the dry cleaner example, I can find out what about my competitors exactly. Basically, just how does the tool work? How much does it cost? How quickly do people get results from a scan? Give me a, give me the, the big picture idea here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, our, our tool costs $149 to learn about your competitors. Um, and your the results... Very- the results are going to be within the hour of you getting onboarded. So you're going to know the status of your competitors, um, how much, you know, how many fake reviews they have, how, what percentage of your competitors have fake reviews. And that's really relevant too, because we're also tracking your ranking uh, on Google, the, the Google search for your query. So if you're a, you know, a, uh, a laundromat and you want to rank number one on Google for that keyword search, and maybe you rank number seven, you really want to take a look at the six competitors ahead of you to see if any of them are cheating their way to the top. Um, cause if, cause if that's the case, like you, now you can do something about it. Uh, our data is actionable, not just with, with Jason, but with the better business bureau, with a few other re- agencies as well. Um, if, and you know, if you want to submit it to any of these licensing boards or consumer protection groups, they love this data. I love it. Yep. Well, I could talk about this all day. Anyway, I wanted to promote one thing that we're collaborating with you guys on. So search labs, vice president of search, Greg Gifford has been doing research this year with a focus on three verticals, auto dealers, personal injury lawyers, and cannabis dispensaries. We're now partnering with you to kind of learn something about the review 
you know, fake reviews in those industries. I know we're kind of in the process of figuring that out, but like, tell us about the study itself, how it came about. And oh, really? if there are any preliminary findings, I would love to know. Oh, I mean, I've, I'm almost finished with the presentation. I'm going to send over to, um, to Greg. Let me pull up yeah. the, uh, just give me a sec here and I'll pull up the uh, yeah. report. Um, so let's see here. Great. All right. Perfect. It's right here. And I've got the data right in front of me. And here we are. Put you on the spot, Curtis. I apologize. I said that. What was that? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. I, oh, I should. <laughs> no worries. I'm just lucky that I have the data right here. Um, okay, so uh, we scanned 8,762 businesses all together. 8,700 something businesses. Okay, that, yeah, that's a critical critical mass of businesses. Okay, yeah, all together, 2.7 million reviews in this sample size. So it's a fairly good sample size of two point. 2.7 million reviews. All right. Yeah. Uh, we, it's kind of embarrassing, but about 200 of the businesses just re really stubborn, refused to scan. So we, we got 8,500 of those scans done. We just migrated to Kubernetes, which we're really excited about because we were able to do all 8,500 of those scans within like 57 minutes. It was poof. Oh, it was, it was really cool. Yeah. To, to see how fast our Kubernetes setup goes. Um, but let's see here. Uh, I mean, what kind of teaser information would you like? I've got, uh, you want a total percent of fake reviews? A total I would. Yeah, all right. Yeah, like, all right. Literally, you could say that wouldn't be so, like, I think. Who do, you, who do you think has the highest percentage of fake reviews? Cannabis, AI, uh, PI, or auto? I'm going to guess lawyers. Nope. It's cannabis. I, that was going to be my second guess. Yep. Apologize. I didn't mean to ruin it for you. So, yeah. No. Wow. So, cannabis more than lawyers. Yep. Okay. Cannabis. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you got to think about, like, the sample size. I don't know how the these businesses were chosen by Greg or, you know, uh, what, you know, what, what types of businesses. But overall... Uh, we saw a much higher percentage of fake reviews in this in this data set than than PI yeah. lawyers. Uh, let's see here. Now this is the, the first time ever car dealers have been the the, the, the like the winner, the gold medal winner. So uh, that's that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, it starts at around 27 percent of of fake reviews for cannabis. Then for PI, it goes uh, down to about twenty one percent, and then for auto, it goes down to about nine percent. So so auto is considerably less spammy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. And 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 we we hypothesize there's a few different reasons for that. Um, you know, in PI law and in uh, cannabis, you have fake listings, where it's much harder to fake listings in the auto industry because, well, you need cars there. <laughs> so there's there's a few other few other reasons too. Um, but uh, we have a list of the major brands. Uh, the the hunt the hundred and eighty two major brands that we caught with fake reviews at versus the one hundred and ten small used car dealerships that we saw you know so a lot of lot of interesting uh, little things about the uh, data that we saw so I, I didn't think major brands would be cheating more than used car dealerships you know but that I know. I wouldn't have thought that yeah, <laughs> yeah but this I don't want, is there a way, is there any possible way uh, there could be a false positive? Like we're, we're scanning quickly. That, 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 that speed was impressive. Is there any way that there could be a, a false positive? I mean. Yes, yeah, totally. Plus or minus 3% or something like that? Yeah. So we have two different tiers for our suspicious reviews. We have what we call obviously suspicious, and then we have somewhat suspicious and then we have a little suspicious, and then we have not suspicious at all. Um, obviously, suspicious contains different t types of data, like duplicate reviews. Like this review was posted for another dealership on the West Coast six right. months ago, and they swapped out the name of the dealership names. Right? That's that's obvious. Like that, you can't get more suspicious than that, especially when they have a bunch of those types of reviews. Like that, if if there was just one, sure, like maybe even two, even three, like it'd be like, okay, this is random, but 
fine. Like a few is okay. But when you have 40, 50, 60 reviews that were stolen from the same businesses and you just had the, the name of the dealership swapped out or maybe the name of the customer service rep, it's obvious, right? Um, other types of obvious data include review pods. You know, fake reviews tr oh, travel in packs, just like dolphins and whales. Uh, okay. Let's say you have, you know, uh, five dealerships that decided to buy fake reviews, maybe a Alfa Romero <laughs> dealership uh, okay. in, 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 in the Northeast, maybe a Ford dealership in Texas, maybe a Range Rover dealership in California and a Jaguar in Seattle. Just this is hypothetical. Well, some of it is. Uh, and, and let's say that all five of these dealerships decided to buy fake reviews. Well, if they use okay. the same person to buy fake reviews from, they would have 10 profiles, 10 people write reviews for all of those dealerships. So the same 10 people wrote reviews for the same five dealerships. We track, we can track this whether they're anonymous or not. So yeah, it's that we call that. Uh, those are those are synthetic review pods, and that go into our obvious uh, suspicious review category. Now, the somewhat suspicious review category, you have things like keyword stuffing, right? Where it looks like right. they're, they're stuffing keywords into the, and not like just a few times, but a lot right. of keyword stuffing. We also look at a few other things like the distance matrix analysis, our our own in house NLP natural language programming you know we if you have a business with a hundred reviews you should have a hundred authors uh a hundred human beings i write different than the way you write i promise you you are a better writer than i am <laughs> but our nlp can separate these two styles of writers and say hey uh these are two different people so when you have fake reviews a lot of the time it's the same person writing multiple reviews across you know different profiles so we cluster them and then we we uh, label label it properly. That's fascinating. Twenty seven percent of cannabis reviews that we found were were, were I, mostly and somewhat suspicious. And in my opinion, those are suspicious enough to to me to label it. I, I'm good with labeling it <laughs> suspicious, just not not trustworthy. That's amazing. Better than one in four. Wow. Well, I am fascinated by this. I would say anybody who is listening to this be on the lookout because I have a feeling Greg Gifford is going to be speaking about this at conferences. We'll probably blog about it. You will be hearing about it more. And we really appreciate the collaboration, Curtis. So, um, well, th well, thank you again. I mean, we're, we're out of time here, but if people want to learn more about you or the transparency company, where should they go? What's your favorite social media? What's the best way to get in touch? Oh man. So I'm active on Twitter and LinkedIn. If you guys want to chat with me, I love talking about fake reviews. Um, if you got a competitor you want to look at, just uh, you guys can, you guys can chat with me. Um, uh, if you want to learn about the company, definitely go to our website. It's askfortransparency.com. You can learn more about our review compliance programs and, you know, some of our, some of our big customers, but but uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, uh, Mark. And I, I can't wait to continue to publish more data about this. I'm super excited about our collaboration with you and, uh, and Greg. And we're really grateful for the opportunity. Likewise. And you guys are the good guys. You know, I really i have known Jason for a little while now and, and getting a chance to meet you. You guys are fighting the good fight. And I just wish you the best. Like, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, you've got a big fan here in Chicago. So I'll sign off for now and, and give you a virtual cheers, but yeah. for everybody watching, uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of Sudden Search. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks again.